أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تعلم أن الله يعلم ما في السماء والأرض إن ذلك في كتاب إن ذلك على الله يسير ويعبدون من دون الله ما لم ينزل به سلطانا وما ليس لهم به علم وما للظالمين من نصير وإذا تتلى عليهم آياتنا بينات تعرف في وجوه الذين كفروا المنكر يكادون يسطون بالذين يتلون عليهم آياتنا قل أفأنبئكم بشر من ذلكم النار وعدها الله الذين كفروا وبئس المصير يا أيها الناس ضرب مثل فاستمعونه إن الذين تدعون من دون الله لن يخلقوا ذبابا ولو اجتمعوا له وإن يسلبهم الذباب شيئا لا يستنقذوه منه ضعف الطالب والمقلوب ما قدر الله حق قدره إن الله لقوي عزيز صدق الله العظيم ألم تعلم أن الله يعلم ما في السماء والأرض Don't you know that Allah is aware of everything that is in the heaven and the earth? Certainly all of this is recorded in a book and surely it is easy for Allah to do so. وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا Yet they worship besides Allah objects for which Allah has revealed no proof. وَمَا لَيْسَ لَهُمْ بِهِ عَلْمٍ And things that they have no information and no knowledge about. وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِن نَصِيرٍ Surely wrongdoers will have no helpers. Before going into the message of the ayah, let us try to understand an example that will make understanding the ayah easy for us, inshaAllah. You are told that someone was watching you doing something wrong, something that was totally illegal. And at the time when you were doing it, someone was watching you. And that person knows all of these details of everything that you have done or you have said. Tomorrow, you have a court date. And that person is going to come to be a witness against you. Because he was watching you. In addition to this, not only that this person knows what you are doing, he was recording everything. So he's going to present a recording of everything that was done by you. He has videotaped everything. He recorded everything that was happening there that you were doing there. When a person is told this, of course he would know that there is no way that I can deny it. Because there is a witness and that witness has recorded everything. So there is no chance to deny it. Now this person would like to find a way to get out of the situation. If this person is wise, he would contact the officials, the people who are in charge of this case, and ask them what, what is it that he can do about it. Because now the whole case is in their hands. And they have everything, they have all the evidences, they have everything recorded. So talk to them, find out what can he do to make things easier on himself. Up to this point, everything this person had done was wrong. To begin with, he was not supposed to do those wrong things. He had done these wrong things, and now everything was recorded, it was witnessed by others, so it made it even now... There is a case against him, and a strong case against him. For this person, it's the best thing now he stops making more mistakes. He cannot afford to make any more mistakes now. Because more mistakes will make the situation only worse and worse. More mistakes will not make the situation any better. We always see in these type of cases when people are stuck. So now the person feels 
let me go, you see, you read this in the papers a lot of times, he feels, let me go and do something to the witness so that he cannot come and witness against me. Do something so that the case is postponed, whether it's right or wrong. I'll have to do something about it. And a person will try to do anything he can, even if it is wrong. And then a lot of time, people end up doing wrong things, and at the end now, his situation is even worse than what he was already in. Only yesterday, it was in the news, in our news here, about something happened in New York the day before yesterday. A person who was a doctor, I think some of you may have read it, a person here, he's a doctor, and there were differences going on between him and his wife for a long time. He had a house that was about nine million dollars. The court had ordered him to sell the house and give four million to his wife. Now he's angry, he doesn't want to give it to his wife. Why am why I'm gonna give my money to my wife? So he finds a solution. The solution is he puts his own home on fire while he's in it. They rescued him. Of course, he had some burns, whatever. And he lost the house. He lost the money. And now the situation is worse than what he was already in. People try to find wrong solutions. And when they try to get into these type of things, then of course they only make things worse for themselves. They cannot afford to make more mistakes anymore. That's it. You have to think right now. And you have to see what you can do to solve the problem, not make it worse. So now, someone is stuck and he's only getting his situation even worse and worse, and he's only making more and more mistakes. He goes out and he wants to hurt that person, he wants to hurt this person, he wants to go and uh, make a, uh, uh, have some false witnesses. At the end, they all are, they all witness against him, they, everyone is caught up, and the situation gets even worse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the very same thing here, in these ayahs. That there are people who make mistakes. And then continue making mistakes. And while they are committing these crimes, there was someone that was watching them. And not only they were watched, everything was recorded. So these people were summoned to the court. Now, they cannot afford to do any more mistakes. They should not. But instead of stopping making more mistakes, what these people chose to do is, they go to another judge and they go to someone else who is not a judge in fact and they try to convince him that look, we come to you and you give the judgment in our favor. So what we will do is, we will say look, I went to this judge and I was, I didn't know that I was supposed to come to you. He is summoned to this court. He has been given the right address. He has been given the right direction and everything. But still, he goes to someone else who is not even a judge. He goes to someone's home and he says to that person, How about you give a judgment in my favor? And that person says, Fine. And he gives the judgment in his favor. And he goes and he wants to show those papers in the court. Look, that person gave the judgment in my favor. Of course, he is making his case even worse and worse that she did not appear in court at the time when you were supposed to be of them. Now you are going totally against the law of the country that a person who is not a judge, he has no position in this country, and you go to that person and you tell him that you are the judge, and you assign him that person as, you assign that person as a judge, and then you get the judgment in your favor from that person. What does this mean? Bring that person. Call that person who gave that judgment. How dare he would give him, even give that judgment? And now... Both of you are considered to be criminals in that court, that even that person who supported you and who pretended that he was a judge when he went to him, he should not have played that role at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in these ayahs, أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Don't you know that Allah knows everything that is in the heaven and the earth? So whatever we are doing, Allah knows all of that and He is well aware of every deed and action of ours. So someone is watching everything that we do. 
someone is seeing us while we are doing all of these things and not only this in nadarika fi kitab this is all recorded in a book fi kitab that is the easiest way of explaining that things have been recorded now we also know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in quran we will present their deeds on the day of judgment how can a deed be presented there is a, there was a long discussion in the past between the scholars that the wording of the quran says that we will present their deeds does it mean we will present the recordings which means things that have been written that this is what this person does or the real deed will be presented in certain form and now we know that presenting the deed in the exact form is not difficult you can record all of this person's deeds and then you can present those exact actions look this is you and this is what you are, you are doing everything is recorded ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عكيد even words have been recorded so everything is getting recorded والله أعلم how and what type of recording that is but for sure it's a type of recording where a person would not be able to deny that this is me and these are my actions because on that day people would even try when I answer the law they will try to deny what Allah is telling them about themselves Allah says you did this and I said no no I know you did this okay اليوم نختم على أفواهم we will seal his mouth now his hands and every or his parts of the body will speak so أعمال will be presented on that day everything that we are doing is getting recorded so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when you are doing all of these things not only someone is watching you someone is recording it also we may call it there is a satellite there and really we can understand now when Allah Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala says that every deed of yours is getting recorded and it's being watched everything is being watched so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that alam ta'alam anna Allah ya'lamu ma fi al-samai wal-ard don't you know that Allah knows everything that is in the heaven and the earth nothing can be hidden from Allah whatever we do is before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah knows and he is well aware of it of it inna dhalika fi kitab everything is recorded inna dhalika ala Allah yaseer and this is very easy for Allah this is very easy for Allah there was a time when some people used to object about this order of the Sharia this rule of the Quran that everything is getting recorded so they used to question that you know if you keep on writing all of these things you need a lot of people writing all the deeds of each and every human being and then where are they keeping so many books records of all human beings where are they keeping it there's, a, there's an object, objection that you find in all books and nowadays of course you know that even the objection does not exist anymore because you get a small chip main main is made by human beings not by Allah human beings able to make a small chip that can contain all the whole library in it in that small ship and if this is what human being can mean what Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala can mean and or what is it that he cannot mean this is our invention so inna dhalika fi kitab everything is recorded and inna dhalika ala Allah yaseer all of this is very easy for Allah it's not difficult having everything recorded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is signing the angels to record everything this is not difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nowadays human beings are claiming it's not difficult for us through the satellite we can watch any person anywhere in the world human beings are claiming it so imagine what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here inna dhalika ala Allah yaseer it's very easy for Allah after knowing this our responsibility should be that we surrender our souls Ya Allah yes we made a mistake we know that we are our record is full of coins 
the record is full of wrongdoing. And if those things are played at the time of presenting the records and at the time of the judgment on the day of Qiyamah, surely I'm gone. But a lot of people, they continue making even more mistakes. And instead of now, after reading this, this is enough for us to repent to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is enough for us to say, yes, it's my mistake. No excuse, ya Allah. I know there is no excuse for me to do. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in spite of all of this, and after knowing these, وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا they still keep on worshipping things beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for which Allah has not revealed any proof. So a person is not assigned as a judge by the government. He goes to him and says, you be the judge. وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا They are worshipping objects beside Allah for which there is no proof. And now they go to them and instead of turning to Allah after all of this, instead of turning to Allah who knows everything about them, they go to someone else. They go to a piece of a rock. And, oh, you are my God, you save me. They go to a human being like them. You are my this, you save me. Worshipping beside Allah objects that for which Allah has revealed no proof. And they don't even have any knowledge about these things. They have no knowledge about these things. This is a piece of a rock that someone shaped it in the shape of a human being and now they go and worship those things. They have no knowledge that the very same rock and the very same stone or you may call it idol that they are worshipping, the same thing is going to be witnessing against them on the day of the day. Just imagine what will happen to the person who ran away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to something else. And that thing goes into the court, that person comes in the court, and he starts witnessing against this person. Oh yeah, he came to me. And he admitted he did this, this, this. Ya yeah, Allah, punish him for all of this. Imagine what will happen to that person. And this is what happens to every person that turns away from Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala, and tries to take refuge anywhere else. وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا Once we know that Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who controls everything. He is the one who is going to judge us for our deeds. He is the one who is having angels recording our deeds. He is aware of all of our deeds. Why not turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's the only choice. What other choice do we have? Turn to Allah and subhanallah. In this course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept this rule also, that if you realize that you are a wrongdoer, and before you are presented to the court, you go to the judge and ask him to forgive you, the judge is going to just let everything go. This is how easy it is and how simple it is. It's so simple. You don't have to go to anywhere else. This is, it has been announced. Anyone have done anything wrong. You have committed crime. And now you know that there are witnesses against you. It's not that you are just doing it out of or your own willingly. No. You already, someone told you that everything was witnessed by someone. And everything was recorded. And tomorrow is your hearing. And that judge has all of this material, hold all the information. And these witnesses will be there witnessing against you. And these witnesses work so hard to record everything. He tells you, just go to the judge and say sorry to him. That's all. And this person runs here and there. He doesn't go to the judge. He's running to everyone else. That you save me, you save me, you save me, you do this for me. Instead of this, he's told the easiest way, just go to the judge. And it has been announced. The government is so kind, is so nice, is and so merciful that they have made this announcement that look, we realize that you made a mistake. If you admit committing to these mistakes and just go and just say sorry, you don't have to repeat everything that you have done. You don't have to mention everything. They will not ask you to sign any papers. Just go and tell the judge that you are sorry. 
Tomorrow when you are presented to the court, the judge will tell all the witnesses not to get up. Just sit down. I don't want to hear nothing from you. We worked so hard. We recorded everything. We did all of this. Yes, you got paid for it. You just sit down. I don't want to hear nothing. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is announcing here. That look, just say astaghfirullah. Just say sorry to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have done a lot of wrong things. Ya Allah, please forgive me. That said, everything is gold. All of those things are erased from your record. These witnesses will not be allowed to come and witness against you for these things. But it's still, people, subhanAllah, despite all of this and making it so easy, what can be easier than that? I mean, just think of something that could be easier than this. There is nothing. But still, وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزَّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا Still there are people who choose some other direction. And they still go to something else and worshipping those things. What these things are going to do for you? Is there any proof that this is your idol, this is your God? Is there any proof that He created you? Is there any proof that He provides you? You know that He cannot do nothing for you. Whether those were the idols of those days or the idols of these days. We have our own idols. They had their idols. It's the same thing. Its names are different. Objects are different. Sometimes our idols are in the form of their idols were still no wood or stone. Our idols are just pieces of paper sometimes. That this will save me. This will do everything for me. These pieces of paper that I have. But no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that we all have to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِن نَصِيرٍ Surely wrongdoers will have no helper because Allah made it so easy. Now the person still did not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of the gifts that he was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was gifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of these things. And if we look at our souls, nothing is keeping us away from turning to Allah but the things that we have been gifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are misusing them. Whether it's a status that a person holds. And because of that status, the person doesn't want to lose that status in his community. So therefore he has to attend, attend all of these gatherings where there is a wihara. Therefore he has to do things and say things that are against the sharia of Islam. Why? He does not want to lose his status. His status is his idol. For some people, is their wealth. Because of his wealth, the person is just going more and more in his wrongdoing. If tomorrow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will just pull that string, and he will just pull that, those dollars away from the person, and he loses that thing, that's it. So the only thing that is making this person keep on going away from Allah, from the deen of Allah, is this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has blessed him with and that is called wealth. For some people, their health, youth, strong, beauty, good looking, whatever else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the person with. I love this, I can drive this, I, I can do this. And the person is lost in his things and these gifts that are given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of these are nothing but gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are misusing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted us with these things so that we can use them the right way. And earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through them. So these are becoming the idols for us now. That are keeping us away from turning to Allah. We are turning to these things. And then, when a person is reminded Someone sits with you and he gives you some nasiha. Someone advises, right away you see this person's face is turning red. Why did you come to my home? Why are you looking, are you knocking at my door? Didn't you find any other house in the world? Well, I'm doing okay with my deen. You don't need to remind me. You see someone doing something wrong. You remind the person, look, this is haram. And right away he turns red. Don't try to teach me deen. I know it. 
وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا بَيِّنَاتِ When our clear revelations are recited to them, تَعْرِفُ فِي وُجُوهِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْمُنْكَرُ You can notice a denial on the faces of the unbelievers. Munkar, disliking the expression of the face tells you that he, is not, he doesn't want to hear these things. He doesn't want to listen to the reminder from Quran, from the, from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When these clear ayahs, beautiful ayahs of Allah are recited to these people, تَعْرِفُ فِي وُجُوهِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْمُنْكَرُ You see it on the face of the kuffar. You can recognize it from his face that the person is disliking it. He does not want to hear them. You talk to him about Allah. He doesn't want to hear them. You talk to him about the deen of Allah. They don't want to hear it. You talk to them about akhirah. Of course, kuffar are to the extreme of the denial. And they really dislike it and they will tell you openly, I don't want to hear it. But unfortunately, a person who is on the same direction, you see the very similar expression may not be exactly the same. There is difference of percentage. But you see, even those who are considered to be believers, they would like to tell you, don't talk to me about that. I'm not ready to hear these things yet. تَعْرِفُ فِي وُجُوهِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُ الْمُنْكَرُ And kufr, as it means disbelief, it means being ungrateful. There are so many ayahs of the Qur'an where the word kufr is used for ungratefulness. لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you be grateful, I'll give you more. وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ كَفَرْتُمْ is the opposite of شَكَرْتُمْ If you be ungrateful, then my punishment is very clear. So now we take that meaning here. You will see on the faces of those who are ungrateful this likeness towards the ayahs of Allah. And now we can see that when we are talking about our souls now, now we are not talking about disbelievers. We are talking about ourselves. Those who are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are misusing the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you talk to them, remind them about Allah, about the deen of Allah, and about coming back and practicing the deen of Allah, repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will see the dislikeness on their face. They don't want to hear these things. And sometimes the person gets very upset with this person who's reminding him. He, he would like to kick him out of his house. He would like to shut the door on him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَكَادُونَ يَسْطُونَ بِالَّذِينَ يَسْلُونَ عَلَيْكِمْ آيَاتِنَا They can barely refrain from assaulting those who are reciting the ayat to them. They can hardly control themselves from attacking those who are reminding them through the ayahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how angry they are when they hear the ayahs of Allah. We need to remind ourselves of this very important point here. Sometimes we all do wrong things. But we need to always keep our hearts and our minds open for taking the nasiha for accepting the advice from others. Even they could be our youngsters. When a person is advising us, we should be open-minded to those advisors and at least listen to it carefully. Don't reject the advice. Don't reject the ayahs of Allah when they are recited to it. And especially what happens normally, this is our behavior and our attitude most of the time that when we are doing something wrong and we are involved in some of the wrongdoings and someone tells us, look, according to this ayah, this is haram. Right away we try to find some other meaning of the ayah. Misinterpret the ayah. Misinterpret the hadith. Reject the meaning of the ayah. Reject the meaning of the hadith. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in this ayah. That this is one of the worst sins in sharia. 
when a person, not only that he is committing the sin, but when he is reminded, he dislikes to hear these reminders, and to the extent that he does not even want to listen to the ayahs of Allah, to the reminders from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And they get so upset with this being, with the reminders that يَكَادُونَ يَسْقُونَ بِالَّذِينَ يَسْقُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِنَا They are about to attack those and uh, do something wrong to those who are reciting the ayahs to them. Now, very quickly, just to remind ourselves of some of these situations that happen to us. You see a gathering and it's a wedding. Muslim wedding. Someone feels that it's time for Salat al-Maghrib. So a person gets up and he calls around. And you see everyone around there. They're so upset. Why did we make that mistake of inviting this person here? This is not a masjid. This is a hall here. This is a wedding. This is not the time. This is not a uh, place of ibadah. This is yakaduna yaspuna bil ladina yaspuna alayhim ayatim. Ka'rifu fi wujuhi ladina kafaru al mulka. You see the expression of disliking on the faces of those who are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if this is the situation of any person in this world, then Allah says, let me tell you something. Should I inform you of something that is worse than this for you? If by hearing my ayahs, the expression of your face changes, and you are hurt, and you don't feel good about hearing my deen, my ayahs, the orders of my deen, then let me tell you this. Something else you are going to face that will be more painful to you and that thing is going to change your face even more. And uh, that's the hellfire when you see it. That's the hellfire when you see it, that it will be more painful, uh, painful feeling for you that you know that you're going in there. And then, once you get into the hellfire, then you see what happened to your face. The face that used to have all kind of expressions on it because of hearing the ayahs of Allah, and you are making, intentionally you are making your face that way, to make fun of that person. Today, once you go into the Jahannam, that Jahannam will change your face. Or we may say, that Jahannam will fix your face now. The face that you are making in those days, at those times when you are making fun of those people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mutafifin, فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يَضْحَكُونَ Today, the people of Iman will laugh at the disbelievers. On that day, he used to make his face and laugh at the people of Iman. Today, the person of his Iman will see his face changing now when he gets into the hellfire and he will be laughing at him. They are about and they hardly can control themselves from attacking those who are reciting our ayahs to them. Ask them, tell them, should I inform you of something that is worse than this? Worse, as I said, that will be more painful to you when you see and it will change that expression of your face even more and that's the hellfire وَعَدَهَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا that Allah has promised to the believers that it has been promised that is the Jahannam of course Jahannam is mainly for kuffar it's not for the people of Iman Jahannam is mainly for kuffar but for those who tries to do the same thing or who does the things that are supposed to be only done by kuffar, then that person will be treated like them in Akhira also. This is what these ayahs mean, that it is mainly for kuffar. But a person who has iman and he still would like to be in that direction, then he will be in that direction, he will be with them. 
وعده الله الذين كفروا وبئس المصير and that is an evil end for that person يا ايها الناس ضرب مثل فاستمعوا له قوم كاين here is an example فاستمعوا له listen carefully to this example ان الذين تدعون من دون الله لن يخلقوا ذبابا ولا اجتمعوا له the ones that you worship beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Sad'oon, the one that you call on besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لَنْ يَخْلُقُوا ذُبَابًا وَلَوْ اِجْتَمَعُوا لَهُ They all together, they cannot do, even if they join their hands together, they cannot create even a fly. And not only this, creating is something too big for them. وَنْ يَسْلُبْهُمُ الذُّبَابُ شَيْئًا لَا يَسْتَنْقِذُوهُ مِنْهُ If a fly takes something away from them, they cannot get it back from the fly. Look at a beautiful example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. He says, all of these objects or these things, these people, it could be living beings or non-living beings. Whatever and whoever you call on beside Allah, تَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ Whoever you call on beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they all get together and try to create only a fly, they cannot do it. They cannot create a fly. And then, if a fly takes something away from them, there is a food there in front of the person is eating and a fly comes, sits on the food and takes something from it. He cannot take it away from the fly. And this is why there is a saying in Urdu language, well-known saying, I don't know how many people understand the real meaning behind it, they call it Makichus. You know what does that mean? That this person is so miser that if a fly will sit on his food, he is going to suck the fly to take his food back. Although it's a saying, but it really means a lot. That if a fly takes anything away from you, you cannot take it back from this life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that look at the situation and the witness of these things that you call on the fire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if still people are turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and calling on these things, ضعف الطالب والمطلوب The one that is calling and the one that has been called, both of them are very weak. Both of them are very weak. They both together cannot even fight a fly. I remember reading in one of the histories about a ruler from Abbasiyim. He used to sit in one position from morning till dawn. He is sitting in one position. He will not move. One day, a fly came and sat on his nose. There were other people sitting around there and they know about him that he is so firm in everything and if he sits over there in you know, his position, he does not move. Now, of course, you know what happens when a fly comes and sits in your face. So he had to move his head and let the fly go away. The fly takes few rounds and comes back, sits on his face. And again, he makes the fly go away. Again, the fly a few more rounds and back on his face. One of the scholars was sitting there. He asked him, he said, why did Allah create flies? He's upset. Why did Allah create flies? So he said, to break the arrogance of people. That through this fly, Allah is breaking your arrogance that you feel you are this, you are strong, but here even a fly, you cannot handle even a fly in your life. Imagine handling everything else in this world. You cannot handle a fly. This fly will make you do things that you, you don't want to do. And you feel that you are being insulted today because this fly made you move. 
so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used these small things and as histories have recorded that Namrud, the king that was fighting Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam who threw Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam in the fire he died through a mosquito this is a king who is trying when I ask Billah to challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ana wahni wa umi I give life and death I'm the one who raises the sun every day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to make him a good lesson for everyone else and teach him a lesson at the same time a fly went through his, in his nose and through his nose gets into his head and is tickling him the fly doesn't die now a mosquito gets into his head and is not dying it keeps on tickling him on his head and imagine when something is tickling you inside the head and now the doctors prescribe for him that there is no other way except that we have to just take his attention away from this fly from this uh, mosquito that is tickling him so in order to do that they said someone just should keep on hitting him on his head and they assigned some people that will keep on hitting him on his head continuously so he won't feel the tickling of the mosquito I think a well known saying in English will fit here very well that from the fry pan into the fire so this person is in the fry pan now and they put him into the fire there is a mosquito in his head that is tickling him and now they are telling him someone should keep on hitting him on his head and finally one of these days someone was so tired of just continuously hitting him and every day we have to just keep on hitting him so he picks up something heavy and just smashes his head but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing people these lessons that look these things they cannot even be these now this example shows us a person who is considered to be the greatest person of his time from a worldly point of view he's sitting, he's sitting at a very high position he makes his decisions about any person kill this person leave this person alone and this person has committed that big crime for which he deserves to be killed no just set him free he makes all of these decisions but he cannot control a mosquito دعوة الطالب والمخلوق ما قدر الله حق قدره they did not recognize Allah as he is they did not understand Allah they did not realize the greatness of Allah ما قدر الله حق قدره as much as they are supposed to recognize Allah they did not understand the greatness of Allah and in reality human beings can never understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he is but at least when we look at these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all around us in the world that show us the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything in the world around us is proving to us that Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has full control over everything there is no one beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has any control and it's still amazing me and after reading all of this human beings are turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala people like us consider to be very religious people and still when we look at our situation we don't find turning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't find that quality of repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran al-Kareem وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمَمٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ We sent messengers to the nations before you. When people rejected the messengers of Allah, فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ We made them go through hardships and difficulties so that they would repent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but the situation there was something totally different. فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُونَ how come when they had, when they went through these difficulties and hardships, they did not repent to me? وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ But their hearts were so hard that they did not repent to Allah even in those situations. 
وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And shaytan beautified their deeds to them. فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ When they forgot all of the reminders that were given to them, they neglected Allah's messengers, they neglected the book of Allah, they neglected all the reminders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ They opened the doors of all the worldly gain to them. Okay? If you want this, take it. حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِحُوا بِمَا أُوتُوا When they were too happy of what they had and of their earnings, أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْتَى All of a sudden we got all of them into that punishment. فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْلِسُونَ Now they are totally hopeless. They have no hope of being protected against the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point is, at the time of difficulty, that's the time when they, would, they should be the most repentant. And we find that even as difficulties are coming, day and night, day and night, we hear about situations in the world, how the whole world is losing the peace and not having any peace of mind, difficulties, hardships, problems, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims, whether they are wealthy or poor, I mean, any person and every person, no peace of mind. What could be a better time than for repentance than this time? When a person sees that hardship, difficulty is all around, no one ha- is satisfied, no one has any peace of mind. People who have, who from the worldly point of view, they got to the highest levels, they earned everything, they got everything, they don't have a peace of mind. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is the time that when a person should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we would only recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his attributes. Inna Allah ala qawiyyun aziz. Allah is powerful, almighty. Allah hu yastafi min al-mala'ikati ghusulahu wa min al-nas. The kuffar had a question. Okay, we are ready to repent. We want to do this. But how come... A person like him when Ayaz of Allah was chosen to be a messenger. If I get it from someone else, then I would hear it. Uh, then I would accept it. If a messenger is chosen from someone that I assign, I assign a person, I would name a person, and that person should become a prophet of Allah, then we will accept from him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah yastati min al-malaikati rusulun wa min al Allah chooses his messengers from amongst angels and from human beings. Some of the people objected to Allah, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if Jibreel comes to you with, uh, with the message, then you won't accept the, the, uh, your deen because Jibreel is our enemy, is the enemy of Yahud because he was sent with adab to Bani Israel. So therefore, we are not going to accept it from Jibreel alayhi wa sallam. This is not our choice. And when the haq is given, you know that this is from Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a message has been delivered to you, then we have no reason of objecting to why this person said it and not the other person. If that person would say it, they would say, then I would accept it. Allah chooses his messenger from among and chosen them from people. That's his choice, it's not our choice. And we don't want to put conditions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I will accept the hidayah and the guidance and I will follow the deen only if you do it in this way, Allah. We have no right of applying conditions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah sami'un basir. Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing and all seeing. يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ He knows what's before them and what's behind them. Before them means whatever these they have sent ahead of them. وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ And whatever things they are leaving behind them that will get them either good or bad as they go back into their grave. This is very important that every person when he leaves this world in the, at, at the end during the period when this person is in Barza the period between the person's death and the day of resurrection is called Barza. In Barza the person will be treated according to two things. Number one, things that he had sent ahead of him. All the amal that he has done and he had sent ahead of him. Ahead of him. And number two, 
thing that he did that will be affecting people after him. And that be that could be good things or bad things. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, مَنْ سَنَّ سُنَّةً حَسَنًا فَلَهُ أَجْرُهَا وَأَجْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهِ بِهَا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا يُنْقَصُ مِنْ مِنْ أُجُورِهِمْ شَيْئًا A person who would do something good, who would say something good, this person will get the reward of doing that good deed, and the reward for every person that will keep on doing that good deed until the day of Qiyamah. And the deed of those people will not be reduced because he is getting some share, or you, you learn from him, so he is going to get 10% of your deed, whatever you would do. It's not like this. They get their full, uh, full reward, and he gets the full reward. Their reward is not being reduced because someone else is sharing it with them. This is Allah's Rahmah. Now, just imagine that through you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided few people to the deen of Allah. Those people, as they came to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their families, of course, now in the third generation has started coming into the deen. And some of their children are kuffas now. Some of their children became ulama. They became scholars. They became sulaha. Two generations and as long as this continues till the day of Qiyamah, you are getting your share of the reward from each and every person that is doing any of those good deeds. A person teaching children has the Qur'an, making children memorize Qur'an. Now, there are hundred students that memorize Qur'an from him. Whatever they are reciting, he's getting the reward for it. And not only the reward for this. Now, these hundred students, in future they will teach more people and say they taught thousand people. He's getting his reward from all of those thousand people. Those thousand people are teaching more people in future. And just look at the reward that he's getting. I mean, our calculations will fail. And not only this. Now, sometime when I'm leading the Salah in the Masjid, and especially if it is in larger large gathering at spring, subhanAllah, my teachers are getting all of this reward. There are a thousand people behind me, and I'm leading the Salah, and my teacher is not even aware of it, and he's getting the reward of all of those. This is sadaqah jariyah, and that a person is leaving behind. Any good deed that a person would leave behind, this is sadaqah jariyah. So whatever good we would leave behind us, that will keep on getting to us in Asra, in our grave. And as I said, it's so much, if we just, if we start looking into that direction and start doing good things, it's so much that it's unimaginable. Our calculations really would fail that how much percentage and how much reward you are getting from all of those people that are doing these deeds, these amal. On the other hand, God forbid, someone will get something wrong. Woman sanna sunna tan sayyi'ah. Fa'alayhi wizruha wa wizru man amira biha ila yawm al-qiyamah. A person who will get something wrong. Anyone that would follow him in that wrongdoing, he is getting the sin for his own wrongdoing, and anyone that would do that wrongdoing, he will get the sin for that also, and until the day of Qiyamah, whoever would do anything like this, this person will keep on getting the sin for it. And this is a very dangerous situation. God forbid that we would do anything like this, that you may just give a suggestion to someone to say something that is wrong and harmful. And that person taking your suggestion, he starts it, he gets into it, he starts it from your suggestion. All the sins that are there, it's coming back to you. So, it's extremely dangerous situation in this situation, and it's extremely important for us to make sure that that is something that we do for our Akhirah. We recite this in Surah Yaseen. إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَحْنِ الْمَوْتَى Indeed, we are the ones who would raise the dead from their grave. 
وَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُوا And we write everything that they have sent ahead of them. وَآثَارَهُمْ And we also write everything that they have left behind them that will be getting to them when they are in their barzakh. وَآثَارَهُمْ This is what آثار means. That whatever they have left behind them for which they will be getting the reward. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ يَدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ He is well aware of everything that they have sent ahead of them and whatever is behind them, whatever they left behind them, they will, get it, they will be getting it, whether it's good or bad. وَإِنَ اللَّهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأُمُورُ And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all, all matters will return. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا ارْكَعُوا وَاسْجُدُوا قُوْيُهُ بِلِيهِ After hearing all of this, Now your heart must be soft. Now you must have realized what you're supposed to do. Now you must have been in a position now when you find the willingness in your heart of turning and repenting to Allah. So don't wait. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu rka'u wa sujudu. Look at the sequence of the ayah. All you who believe, do the ruku' and sujud. And normally when Quran refers to ruku' and sujud together, it means salah. Which means, get up and do the salah. As soon as the reminder comes, as soon as a person feels that I have been turning away, I'm going away, I'm a sinner, I have been doing wrong, and as soon as we realize that, turn to Allah, perform to Raka'a Salah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu al-ka'u wa sujood. And then, after this, this is not the end, this is the beginning. Now after this, continue doing the ibadah of Allah. Wa'budu rabbakum. Now keep on doing the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once you have realized this is what you're supposed to do, you give up all of the wrongdoing, you realize that you need to repent to Allah, you perform the two rak'ah salah, and now you came back to the ibadah of Allah, from now on make sure only good you will produce, only good you do, only what is liked by Allah. وَفْعَلُ الْخَيْرِ And only do khayr, only do good in your life. Don't do anything wrong. A lot of times, shaitan works especially with people like us, who are trying to do something for deen. Whether we can call it, the reason I said people like us, a person who, mashallah, is considered to be a scholar or a student of Islam or some working in the deen of Allah, for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan works with people like that. In what field? Okay. He is doing all of these good things. Make him do something wrong. Make him do something wrong that will spread evil everywhere. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, make sure waqa'alul khayyir. Now keep on doing the ibadah, and through the ibadah you will be able to hold to and doing the khayr only. وَفْعَلُ الْخَيْرِ Once you do this, اِرْكَعُوا وَسْجُدُوا You do the salah, and you continue doing the ibadah after that, and after that you make sure you are only doing khayr, you are not falling into shar, you are not doing any evil. That, the result of that will be لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ You will succeed for sure. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So that you may succeed. And, Always remember, never think that I have done a lot. I am doing so much now. وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِ Struggle in the path of Allah as much as it deserves to be struggled for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As much as, much as you owe it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. حَقَّ جِهَادِ As much as you are supposed to do it for Allah. How much I am supposed to do for Allah. And of course there is no end to it. Therefore, وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِ Keep on struggling and striving in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you are supposed to do it for Allah, not for yourself, not for anything else, as much as you are supposed to do for Allah. Who is Tabakum? Because He is the one who chose you. No one else chose you. Who is Tabakum? He is the one who chose you. Now, if shaitan would come and tell you that look مَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ this deen is made very easy no difficulty in the deen 
and now they are saying that I have to struggle, I have to wake up for Salat al Sahajjah, I have to keep on doing these ibadahs, and deen is not maybe it's difficult, deen is, deen is made easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ I did not make the deen difficult the way it is. Difficult the, way it is. the way it is, it's already easy. Sometimes people feel that deen is difficult, I'm going to make it easy. A person asked me once, he says, you know, I cannot wake up for Salat al-Fajr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, مَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجَ Allah did not make deen difficult for you. So there is no difficulty in this deen. I cannot wake up for Salat al-Fajr at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. So I wake up 10 o'clock and do the Salat al-Fajr. As if Allah wal Ayyazu billah made it difficult and He is making it easy. Allah is telling us, I already, the way it's designed is easy. And if you feel that it's difficult, something is wrong with you. You know the courses that have been designed, the student has to go through that course. And they have been designed in a way that a normal student will be able, every student will be able to go through it and pass it. It's designed in that way. So now, if our child would come home and say, you know, this course is too difficult for me. I can't do this one. You tell him, no, this is not difficult. All the children are doing it. It's easy. A lot of times, people feel that there is difficulty in practicing deen and then fail to understand that really the difficulty is not in deen. Because deen is easy already. The difficulty is in our atmosphere. That the atmosphere I live in is making it difficult for me to practice it. So deen is already easy. If I was in some other community somewhere else, I would have been able to do it. That's a clear indication that deen is not difficult. It's only because of other things I have made it difficult on my soul. So the difficulty is not from deen, it's just like you go to some of the communities and you can't find halal food meat over there. So now if someone would say, oh having halal meat is so, halal meat is so difficult. No, it's not difficult. Go to other community where they have 10 stores for halal meat, you can find it everywhere. So it's not that finding halal is difficult, it's only the place that you are in. You go and you go to somewhere else, it will be easy. So the difficulty is not in finding it, the difficulty is in being at the place that you are in. So a lot of times our situation is not the deen and we fail to understand and we attribute those things to deen. How can I grow a beard? It's difficult. The difficulty is not in growing it. It's in the people that are around us telling us, no you cannot. How can I wear the hijab? It's difficult. The difficulty is not in wearing that. Difficulty is in the atmosphere that we are in. Who are telling us, everyone is telling us, no, you should be without it. So the difficulty is not in deen. It's from our side. وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ He did not meet this deen. And he did not have any hardship or difficulty in this deen for you. مِلَّةَ أَبِيكُمْ Ibrahim. This is the same faith of your father Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. What does it mean when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is the deen of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam? Why not the deen of Musa alayhi salam? Why not the deen of Isa alayhi salatu wa salam? Why not the deen of Nuh alayhi salam? Really we can call it the deen of all of those anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam. The reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam was number one, the kuffar of Quraysh. They always considered themselves to be the followers of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them, I'm telling you what was the ways of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. So these are the ways of Ibrahim alayhi salam that Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is teaching them. Number two, the other communities Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was dealing with, Jews and Christians. If he would say, Minnata Musa alayhi salam. Now, the Christians will say, okay, if it is Musa alayhi salam, we are not going to follow, we are Isa alayhi salam. We want Isa alayhi If you say Isa alayhi salam, the Jews will say, we are out. Ibrahim alayhi salam is a, is a prophet that is commonly accepted by all those who consider themselves to be followers of any religion. 
is any divine religion. They all respect Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And then, the word abikum, your father, will not fit on Musa alayhi salam and will not fit on Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. It fits on Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. That, this is the way of your forefather, of your father Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Ishaq alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. Both are the children of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Whether now you consider yourself to be Arab or Jews or Christian, they are all from Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Millat abikum Ibrahim. Huwa sammakum al muslimin min qablu wa fi hadha. He named you Muslims both before and in this Quran. This is a word of Quran, the ayah, where a lot of people got very confused about it and could not understand what does it mean. That who is the Muslim al-Muslimin? Ibrahim a.s. named you Muslim min qabl, in the past, and in this Quran. Where did, did Ibrahim a.s. name as Muslim in the past? And if he named us in the past, how did he name us Muslims in Quran? The point is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam when he built the Kaaba, Rabbana waj'alna muslimayni lak. Ya Allah, make us the truth obedient to you. Islam, submission. Make us the true submitted servants of yours. وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَا And from our offspring, bring a nation, ummah, that will be muslimah. That will be submitted to you. So now the word muslim is used. So he used the word muslim at that time for the nation that will be coming in the future. So he named as muslims at that time. That your Allah sent a nation that will be muslims. And then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals that ayah, that dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, in Qur'an. So even in Qur'an, the word Muslims is used as a reference from Ibrahim alayhi salam, that he calls you Muslims. So in Qur'an we are called Muslims, by the reference of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, and at that time he also called us Muslims. And... Of course, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is not the first Muslim and he was not the first person who would call people Muslims. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, Adam alayhi salam, from the time of Adam alayhi salam, this Islam is said, from that time, and all the Anbiya alayhi salam were only teaching Islam, submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam's name is mentioned because he made dua for this ummah, that Ya Allah, Bring a nation that will be Muslimah. وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَهِ So in the past he named as Muslim when he was making the dua. And on his reference, Quran mentions that word that he said these nations will be called Muslim. لِيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْكُمْ وَتَكُونُ شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent you to this world so that the messenger becomes a witness to you and you become witness to other people. Messenger will witness to you people that Ya Allah, I have conveyed my message to these people and we will be witnessing for other people or against other people whatever that would come to. In Asira, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam will be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their ummahs and large number of their ummahs are disbelievers. They will be asked, how come you did not follow this prophet of Allah? And the response will be, he did not tell us everything. We didn't know that if we really had to follow him. I never thought that this was true. It was not proven to me. He did not convey the message the way he was supposed to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. What do you have to say about this? Your nations are saying that you did not convey the message to them. They will say, Allah with it. Is there any witness that you did convey the message? They will look around. We can't find no witnesses, Ya Allah. 
some of these MBA, they can find no witness to witness for them that they can wave the message. Of course, the whole world is standing there. The, the Ummah of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will get up and say, Ya Allah, we will witness for him. I can witness that Nuh alayhi salam can wave the message of your deen to these people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call us. Come up here. How can you witness? Did you see? No Allah. But I have something, knowledge, stronger than be, being able to see. And that is, I read your Qur'an. And in the Qur'an, you informed us that Nuh alayhi salam can wave the message to his people. And on the basis of that Qur'an, the information that I got from you, Ya Allah, I can witness that Nuh alayhi salam did 